Hey, what's going on guys? Hope everyone's doing well as usual. Got a pretty nice, pretty good question privately recently from someone named Amir. Thank you very much, Amir. But these questions, they're very general. They're not like crazy personal questions, but they're general enough that I thought it would make for a pretty nice video. And all of these questions are related to working. So Amir asked five questions and before we get started, let's just, I'm gonna read off these questions first so we have some context. First question, what changes do you see for this line of work? What are some major problems working in this field? What are your responsibilities as a programmer? What do you like most about your job? And finally, what is the most challenging part of your job? So those questions, even though they seem a little jumbled, they all have a common theme and it's all related to working. And the tricky part of those five questions is that you could answer those five questions completely differently with just two different jobs. There are so many permutations, right? Different company, startup versus big company, different business model, different industry, different languages used. There's so many ways to kind of cut that data that you could really answer just those five questions completely differently with just two side-by-side -side jobs. So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna try my best to answer those five questions that Amir asked. Thank you, Amir. I'm gonna try to answer those questions with the context of my first job out of college. My first job that I got straight out of school was at Qualcomm in San Diego. And the position was for embedded software development and my official my official title on paper was engineer, one word. So I graduated 2009. I started this job early 2010, spent two years at this position, and I'm gonna try my best to answer these five questions. All right, let's do it. First question is what changes do you see for this line of work? Before we get too deep into this is that embedded software, embedded software is not going anywhere in my opinion. So normally the trend is if you're very low in the stack, you need fewer people to do those jobs. And once you get higher in the stack, you need more and more people. So it's kind of directly correlated. So let's just take one example. Say you're a hardware design engineer. That's pretty low in the stack, right? Designing some of the chips. Well, there are few people. There are not too many people that have that skill set. So there's not too many hardware designers. You won't encounter them too often. So again, once we get higher in the stack, if hardware is down here, it's kind of like hardware, embedded software, and then finally at the very top is kind of like application level code. That's why most people do application code. Most people are at the top of the stack and fewer and fewer people are at lower levels of the stack. I don't wanna say that software developers are very displaceable, but if you had to displace some of them, it would be higher in the stack where there's more people. So one example of this is if you're a photographer and you're looking to make a quick blog, for yourself, you could have two options, right? One option is you hire a freelance software developer to help you make your blog, or you just sign up for Foursquare, or, or sorry, you sign up for Squarespace or WordPress. So back to this position I had, it was embedded software, and that's still pretty niche in the software realm, so I don't think those jobs are really going anywhere. Question number two is what are some major problems working in this field? For me personally, this is actually more of a personal thing, but when you're an embedded software developer, you don't really see the fruits of your labor too well. Like it's not a very sexy type of development. So let's just take an application developer, for example, right? If you're working on a game or you're working on your new website, you actually see the results of that immediately, right? If you work on a new homepage or a new level in your game, you see that very quickly. You build the level and you can physically play it. For me, the entire manifestation of all my work was that the phone turns on. That was it. So for this position that I held, the code, the code that I worked on was code that was actually executed before the operating system was even loaded. So it's before you even see the Apple logo pop up on your screen. And no one, you can't really show your friend that, right? Your friend can be like, hey man, let me see what you've been working on at work. And I'll just be like, oh, your, your phone power's on. When you're working on such a low level like this, your work is almost kind of binary, right? You're working hard just to get it to work. So what am I really getting at here? But you know, some people wouldn't really mind this. Some people do like working on really, really low level stuff. They don't care about 
putting an app to Android or the App Store, they don't care about getting like millions of installs. They just wanna work on this cool low level stuff. But if your mindset is a little more product focused, you wanna work on something really, a cool product or a service for people, you want something a little tangible, then doing some really low level work like this might not be very fun for you. Furthermore, this software, the embedded software I was writing at the time, it's a little dry. Like there's slow development cycles, it's a lot of reading, it's a lot of testing, it's not agile by any means. So if you're really looking for boom, 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 like fast paced, changing code, pushing code every single day, embedded developing is probably not for you. Third question was, what are your responsibilities as a programmer? So just touched upon this a little bit, but kind of responsible for some of the core level device drivers in Qualcomm's mobile chipsets. So that's code that kind of interfaces with the hardware and makes sure the hardware is working really well and provides a good interface for other software. Responsibilities again, is that the phone just works. You know, we're not building a product, we're just making the thing work. You don't really do agile at this level, right? Our actual cycles of development were actually dependent on hardware cycles, right? If the hardware doesn't change, we don't actually have to do anything. But once new hardware comes out, new hardware gets released, we have to update our software to accommodate for that hardware. It's not really like application programming where you can just release software every two weeks, iterate it on it really fast. Embedded developing is much more slow paced get things working, and you're kind of dependent on how the hardware changes. So during that time, we had weekly meetings. I got like a one-page presentation of what I did for the week, like a one-pager, and we would all present it at a weekly team meeting. But overall, the features and the projects, they're very, they're very long, like multiple weeks, sometimes even months, and just a lot of testing, and it's not fast at all. So I think you guys got the feel for that. The thing is when you write device drivers, this low level code, it actually shouldn't change very fast, right? Application level code deserves to be iterated on very fast to match like a product or match the consumer needs. For embedded level software, you're judged by it's working. So once it's working, you don't wanna to touch it too much unless it's really not working. So some things I did, wrote a ton of C code, wrote some assembly code for highly optimized stuff, read a lot of hardware manuals, did a lot of testing, and it was very slow, slow code review. So that's the gist of embedded engineering. Fourth question is, what did you like most about this job? So the best thing that I got out of this job, this embedded job, is that it really forced me to understand how computers work. When you're writing software that's so low level like this, when you write software that interacts with hardware, you need actually a very firm grasp on the whole hardware, the hardware systems, and also different hardware components and how they interact with each other. I didn't design the hardware by any means, but you had to at least know enough about the hardware system and how the other people put it together to write some good software for it. Another thing that I kind of liked about this job was that it really forced me to pay attention to details. Because the software really just has to work, you have to test it and look at it very, very uh, thoroughly. So just a couple examples of some cool projects I worked on while I was there. One of them was we wrote this highly optimized mem copy function in assembly, like not even C, it was pretty crazy. We wrote this thing in assembly so it could perform really fast because actually the function we wrote in C, when it was compiled down, it actually wasn't as fast as it could be. One other crazy kind of hardware software thing we did was that we took uh, one of the caches on one of the processors and we locked it down. So usually when you use a cache, you store data in there, like data that you wanna retrieve very fast. Well, we did this cool thing where we kind of locked down the cache and we put some executable code in the cache. So actually you could actually run code in the cache, which isn't very conventional, but we did this cool thing where we prevented cache evictions loaded up some actual runtime executable code in there and made it run really fast. All right, fifth and last question to address, but what was the most challenging part of your job? The most, by far the most challenging part of this whole position wasn't the software at all. It was actually managing office politics and bureaucracy. So this was a really big company, like Qualcomm, 
The team at Qualcomm that handles the mobile chips is a huge team and there's so many people doing so many different things. There's a lot of office politics stuff going around. I'm better at this kind of stuff now. I don't particularly like it, but you can imagine straight out of college, not too much work experience, you're thrown into this whole kind of political system with all these other engineers and it's kind of hard to navigate. So because this position was very corporate, like kind of big company, I think the most challenging part of that was just managing people, right? Working with other people and you're not gonna get along with everyone, right? You might think you can, but you really can't. So that was probably the toughest part of that job. All right, guys, that's the end of the video. And Amir, thank you again. If you're watching this, thank you for asking me those five questions. They're very thoughtful, insightful questions and I could apply them to many different things. But like I said earlier, these five questions, you can answer these completely differently for another job. Like for some of the other positions I had, I could answer these questions completely differently and maybe I'll do that in a separate video. But what we just talked about here was my best shot at answering those questions with the context of being an embedded software engineer at Qualcomm straight out of school, right? So it's a very particular circumstance. All right, guys, that's it for the video. Probably a long video this week. Didn't do too much editing, but hope you enjoyed it. Hope it was helpful. Thank you again for the questions and hit me up in the comments if you have any questions. If you ask me something and I really don't respond, I think email, I read the email address very often. So I'm gonna put the email again in the description. And if you have like a personal question or something, it's better to just email me and I'll try to answer. All right, take care.